Okay, so in our last lectures, we studied return risk, and we know, you know, the risk including a diversified risk and non-diversified risk, and our beta is measure what? Measure market risk, that means a non-diversified risk, right? So. When we try to, you know, get expected return for a stock, right? We usually use our, you know, non-diversified risk right, to determine how much we need to compensate by use the return. So how can we form the beta to measure expected return? Right, will be today's lecture right, about. First, let's determine, you know, several concepts. Right? The first one is for risk, risk premium. Right? Risk premium is expired return minus risk free rate. And uh, you can see expired return. Right, it's based on the uh, you know our calculations right we saw in the last lecture right it's by return is based on the probabilities of different event right and times of return accordingly right we have the spy return right so for example we have the three case for economy right either can be recession or can be what can be expansion, right? Or can be mild growth, right? So three state, right? And you have a different probability for different state, and also return for different state, right? And we do the, you know, some product of this, you know, probability and return. We saw expired return, right? Expired returns for your asset, for your investment, right? Minus risk-free rate, right? Called risk premium. Right, premium in something above something, right? So means the return for your asset, right? Above the risk-free rate, right? Risk-free rate. Let me give you an example, right? So for example, what is the market risk premium, right? Market risk premium is the Rm minus what? Rf, right? M means the market, F means the risk free rate, right? And the M here means the market, right? So which one can re represent the market? For example, we have the stock exchange, right? And we have the, you know, the index for the stock change, for example, S&P 500. Right, that's the biggest 500 companies right, on the U.S. stock change. Right, so this SP 500 is our index for the you know for the market. Right, so we can use the S&P 500 right annual return, for example, minus the risk free rate rate right, for the annual based. Right, it's our market based premium. So market return above the risk free rate. And uh, the higher of the beta uh, should be the greater of what? Risk premium, right? So the more non diversified risk right, you take, or you can say the more market risk you take, you should compensate with what? More what? More return. Right, so that's why we have a greater risk premium should be. Can we define a connection between the risk premium and the beta? Right? So we can compute its by return. The answer is yes. Right? Now it's our time to study these connections. Right? You can see here. When you increase in the beta, right, when you increase in the non diversified risk, right? 
your expired return should be increasing, right? So we have the more return premium, right? More risk premium above what risk free rate, right? So you can say your risk premium, right? Were increasing with what? Were increasing with the beta, right? The beta. Right, so that's the curve tells you about. Right? While the beta increasing, right? your risk premium is also increasing. Right? So what is the slope of this curve? Right? What's the slope of this curve? Right? So what's the you know the ratio of the distance here divided by this one here? Right? Let me show this connection on this slide. We have the expired return minus risk free rate, right? Expired return minus risk free rate as the distance of the vertical, right? And what's the horizontal distance? Is the beta, right? It's the beta on this point, and so the ratio is the risk premium over the beta. Okay, so that's for this slope. Okay. Can we get some connection for this ratio? Yeah, we can. Okay. For example, let me choose a special point when the beta equal to 1. Okay. If the beta equal to 1, we know it is a what? It is a market portfolio. Okay. So the whole market index that should have the beta equal to 1. Right, it's the same risk, at right, the same risk as the market, right, as the market. Right, so when the beta equal to one, right, we actually have what? Market, right? Portfolios, or you can see the market index. Right, so we have the RM. As the return should be what should be here, right? Market return RM, right? RM minus RF, right? It's the vertical, right? Over the beta, right? Beta here is, is a special number, number one, right? So that's the slope based on this triangle, right? But you know, for any dot on these straight lines, they must share the same slope. Right. So this one you solved for a random stock should be equal to the ratio for this one on the beta equal to 1. Right. So these two should be equalized. These two should be equalized. Now we can make these two ratios equalized right, to see what happened. Right. So first let me erase all the inks. Right. Now we put these two ratios together right, to see what's going on for these two ratios right, in these equations. Right? We put these two equalized. Right? So if these two are equalized, means the expired return right, minus risk free rate over beta right, equal to the Rm minus Rm. Right? And you can times the beta for both sides. Right? Then the beta and beta will be what? Cancel out, right? For the you know left hand side. And so left hand side will be the you know risk premium. Right? And the right hand side is the beta times market risk premium. And so that's our <coughs> formula. Right, we will derive right, for this chapter. Right? ERA is by return of any asset on this street line right? minus risk free rate equal to the beta times RM minus RF. Right, that's our you know equations by operate these two ratios right for this street line 
we got this equation okay? and you can see if you move in the risk free rate okay, to the right hand side right now we have the ER is by return right, equal to risk free rate plus the beta times market risk premium right? and this is risk free rate Right? And beta is a, uh, you know, is a uh, coefficient. All you can say is a uh, scalar and right? measure what? Measure the market risk. All you can say non-diversified right? risk. Non-diversified. Right? Non-diversified right? risk. And Rm minus Rf right, is the market risk right, premium. Right, so you can combine these three parts right, in this equation to solve what to solve the expected return. Right, expected return. And you can see here, right, we call this curve, this chart, right, this red curve as what as security market line right? means the market arrive equilibrium right? the slope of the security market lines is called reward to risk ratio right it's the risk premium right over the beta right so you know risk premiums are reward right beta measures the market risk right so this is a reward to risk ratio right you can say we derive this one one is the er minus rf over the beta right the other one is the erm right market return minus risk free rate over the one right so both are reward to risk ratio right this ratio will be constant right for the security market line right for the same straight lines but they have the same slope Okay. And because the beta equal to 1 for the market asset, okay, so you can say our slope is equal to what? Market risk premium right, we showed in the previous curve. Right, so it is a very important conclusion. Right? We were actually testing these questions in the final. Right? What, is the, what is the slope of the market security line? Right? It's the market risk. Premium. And we can see some question right here. For example, what is the reward to risk ratio for the questions that we showed in the previous example? We can use our formula, right? It's by return minus risk free rate is the risk premium right? over the beta, right? So it's equal to a 7.5, right? So if the risk reward uh, reward risk ratio right, is above 7.5, right, that means the dot right should be plot above these lines and right, they have the higher reward to the same risk right, compared with this curve. Right? And if they have a reward risk ratio less than seven, right, so means the dot has a lower slope than our curve here, right, for 7.5. So the dot should be plot below this red curve. And we can say that's our previous proof, right, these two will be hold because they are linear lines, right, every dot share the same slope, right. And this is for the random asset, a random investment, A, right, and this one is for the market asset specifically, right? When the beta equal to what? Beta equal to one, right? Beta equal to one. And you can say they are equalized, right? Equalized for a same street line. For the capital asset pricing models, right? We have these equations, right? 
is by return equal to risk free rate plus the beta times the market risk premium. Right? And if we know the asset systematic risk, we can use the CPM model to determine right, its expired return. And this is true whether we are talking about financial asset or any good physical asset. Right? They share the same you know, concept. Right? If you want to get more return, you need to take more risk. Right? So if you are offered beta risk, right, you should also compensate with our higher risk premium. Right, so you will get return ER right, as our formula here. Right? And we call this one as a capital asset pricing model. Right? We will use this one to solve the expired return right, for most questions. For example, right, for the following four securities, right, we already know the beta, right? we can continue to solve what? is by return right, for the different securities right, in this table. And uh, if you have a higher beta, means you need to compensate with a higher return. Right? We can use the CPM model, capital asset pricing model, to solve this return. Right? For example, for the DCLK store, right, is by return will equal to the risk free rate plus the beta times RM minus RM, right? A risk free rate is given by 4.15%, right? Beta is what? Beta is the 2.685, right? Then times the risk premium, 8.5%, right? And you can see our return should be what? 26.97%, right? And you can apply the same calculations also for the other securities, right? Like the KO, INTC, and KEI, right? Risk free rate plus the beta times market risk premium, right? So every stock has different beta, right? But they have the same risk free rate and market risk premium, right? So when you substitute different beta, you can get different return, right? For different stock. The higher beta, should also with what higher is by return. And here just a recap of our you know CPM models, right? And our slope right for the CPM models is what is the uh, risk premium, right? And uh, it is equal to the risk premium. Beta, right? And you know for the market asset, right? Beta equal to one, right? So the slope, right? To be more specific, is the market risk what premium, right? Market risk premium, right? For the slope, right? The vertical over the horizontals, right? And you can see our, you know statement here, right? The slope of the SML, a right, security market line, is the market risk premium, right? That is the reward for bearing an uh, average amount of what? Systematic risk. The equation for this SML can be written as risk free rate plus the beta times the market risk premium, right? We call this one as a capital asset pricing models, right? CPM models, Kevin models. Let's do some calculations, right? For example, for one asset with a beta 1.2, with free rate equal to 5%, market returns 13%. What is the reward to risk ratio? Reward is the risk premium, right? So that's the market return, right? Minus risk free rate. And the risk is the beta, right, it's 1.2. That's equal to 8% over 1.2, right? That's for the, you know, for the regular stock, right? But be careful, right? You can say for our 
market asset, right? The beta equal to one, right? So what is the slope? What is the reward to its ratio? It's m, right? Beta m equal to one, right? What is the what what is the um premium? Right, premium is the return minus risk free rate, right? So that's the thirteen percent, right? Minus what? Minus risk free rate five percent, right? So for the reward to risk ratio for this line, right? Especially for the you know mass uh risk market risk, right? Asset will be the thirteen. Minus five percent over the one, right? So equal to what? Equal to eight percent. At least called a uh, market risk premium. Also, you can call this one as uh, what? Reward to risk ratio, right? What's its by return? For the asset, right? For any asset, you see we need to follow CAPM model, right? CAPM models is specified as risk free rate. Risk free rate. Plus the beta times what? Rm minus Rf, right? What is risk free rate? 5%, right? Beta is what? 1.2, right? Market risk premium 13 minus 5, 8%, right? So 5 plus 9.6, right? Equal to the 14.6%, right? So this province asking two questions. The first part asking the reward to risk ratio. That's a slope for the street line on our security market lines, right? That's a slope, right? And the slope, you know, it is equal to the market risk premium, right? So that's the RM over minus RF over the one, right? That's for the market dot here, right? Market dot here. Right, and uh, for the expiry returns, we will use the uh, CAPM model, CAP model, right, to solve expiry return. And right? that's the risk free rate plus beta times the market risk premium, right, eight percent. Let's do another questions, right? For example, risk free rate is four percent. Required rate of return on the market is 12%. What's its by return if the asset has the beta 1.5? Right? What is the reward to risk ratio? Right? And what's the required return on a portfolio consisting 40% of the asset above? Right? And also remaining of the portfolios wall with the average amount of what? Systematic risk. Right? So it is a problem with the three questions, right? Let's solve the first questions. Right? The first question right, is for the expired return right, for this asset. We will use our CAPM models. Right? So that's equal to the expired return, right? equal to the risk free rate plus the beta times the market risk premium, right? And uh, we know our risk free rate is 4%, right? Our beta, right, equal to 1.5. The market return is 12%, right? So the calculations that you have should be like this way. Right? And it equal to the four percent plus one point five times eight percent. Right, so four percent plus the twelve percent. Right, equal to what? Sixteen percent. Right, so based on this beta, right, our asset should get a expiry return sixteen percent. Next one, what is the reward to risk ratio? For reward risk ratio is the R minus Rf over the beta, right? So it is equal, right, for the whole security market line, right? So we can use our, you know, market asset, right, as the 
ratio to stop it right, to make this one even easier. Right? So that will be the Rm minus Rf divided by beta m. Beta m equal to the 1. Right? For any market asset, their beta should equal to 1. Right? And Rm here is given 12%. Right? So 12% minus risk free rate, 4%. Right? So that's equal to what? 8%. 8%. Okay, so next one. Question three, right? Question three is a portfolio, right? Within what? Within the two asset, right? One is the asset as the asset in the first questions, right? For the weight, forty percent, right? Remained will be what? Market asset, right? Will be market asset because this one shares the same what? Average risk as the systematic right, as the market, right? So you can see here, right? Forty percent of the portfolios right, will be spent in a regular asset, right? Like we did in question one, right? So forty percent times return, right? We solved for the first questions, right? Sixteen percent, right? That's the asset, right? For the 40%, right? Then the remaining percentage will be in a what? Market asset, right? So 1 minus 40 will be equal to what? 60%, right? So remaining 60% will be in a market asset. So 12%, right? So what's the portfolio return? 40 minus 16 will be 6.4%, right? Plus 60 times 12. 720, right? So 7.2%, right? 6.4 plus 7.2 will be 13.6 percent okay so you can see that's the answer the first one is 16 percent right the next one is eight percent right last questions will be 13.6 percent all right so i put the answer also in the next slide right so you can check the answer here right and uh, you know when we try to raise in the capital right, for the asset, right, for the, you know, for the companies, we have the different ways, right? You can either, you know, borrow loan directly from the bank, use the mortgage or use the credit, right? Or you can, you know, borrow the long-term capitals by right, use the debt or what? Or equities, right? The cost of the debt is interest charged, right? For the debt, right? How about cost of equity? If you issue the equities, you also pay the what? Pay the cost, right? And what's the cost for equity? It's the return required by the equity investors, given the risk they are taking right, from the firm, including the different risk. For example, business risk, right? And also financial risk, right? What is the business risk? For example, right, during the COVID-19 pandemic, right, many restaurants closed their business, and so they will not generate any, you know, revenue anymore, right? So that's the risk if you're holding restaurant stock, right? For example, if you're holding a stock, right, in a, you know, red lobster, right, and then you can see the stock, right, will lost the return right during the pandemic of the what coronavirus right and what is the financial risk financial risk here actually means the company can what can default right if they don't run in business well the company will default so they will not pay any what dividend right to the stockholder right so that's also called called financial risk And uh, we can use our security market line, right? Also to solve the cost of the equity, I right? use the CAPM model, Kevin models, right? How to use the Kevin models, right? To solve the cost of the equity? Actually, that's what? That's the requirement of return for equities, right? The requirement of return for the equity holder will be the cost to what? To the company, right? Cost to the company. 
That's the word. That's the cause of what? That's the cause of equities, right? I think this one makes makes sense, right? You pay the return right to the equity right? holders. It will be the cost for you to raise in these equities, right? So that's the cost of what? Equities, right? It can be soft as the CAP models is by return, right? Risk free rate plus the beta times the market risk premium. For example, here, right? In your company, right? You get this data, right? You have the equity beta equal to the 0 0.58. The current risk free rate is 6.1%. Its value market risk premium is 8.6%. Right? What is the cost of equity using the security market line valuation technicals? Right? And uh, we know our security market line valuations is using the capital models, right? using the CAPM models, right? capital asset pricing model. Right? We have the risk free rate plus the beta times the market risk premium. Right? And our risk free rate. Right, it's the 6.1 percent. Beta, right? Beta equal to what? Beta equal to 0.58. Our market risk premium, right? Is given, is directly equal to what? 8.6 percent. Be careful, it is already a premium, right? You don't need to minus 6.1 percent because these ones are market risk premium, not market risk return, right? So be uh, pay attention right, to these, you know, these details right in the questions. Right, it will give you different answer if you don't pay this, you know, attention right for these minor things. Right? So you can say our expiry expiry return for the equities will be the six point one percent right plus beta times the market risk premium right equal to eleven point one percent. Things we came up. With the similar numbers, right? When we use the dividend growth models, right? So you can very, you know, confident, right? You got a right estimate, right? When we study the dividend growth model, right? In the equity chapters, right? We know, you know, the cost of equities can also use the dividend growth models, right? And then the price of the stock, P zero, right? Equal to D one over R minus G, right? R is expired return or required of return for the stock, right? So this R actually is the cost of equities, right? So R can be solved as what? D1 over P0 plus what? Plus a G, right? Now we also get a second way right, to solve the cost of equities. Use the CAPM model, right? The R is equal to what? R equal to the risk free rate risk free rate plus the beta times the market right market risk premium right so both way can solve the cost of equity right one based on the dividend growth model right one based on the CAPM model right both way can solve the what cost of equity but not always they were exactly the same, right? They can have the disparity, right? If they happen to have the same numbers, right? So you are very confident that right? you got a exactly right estimate right, for your cost of equity. But if they have a big disparity, you must to do more analysis to determine which way is better. So what's the advantage of the security market line method? And this method, explicitly adjusting forward for the systematic risk, right? Or you can say non-diversified risk on the market risk, right? And the beta is a good measure for the what systematic risk. And also this method apply to any companies, right? And if you can estimate the beta, right, this method will be cool, right? You can solve any expired return if you want. For the DGM model, dividend growth model, you know it can only apply to the company pay what? Pay the dividend, right? And also dividend for this company should be what? Grow, right? With the same what? Same rate forever. Then you can apply this model.
Right? But for the beta method, right, for the CPA model method, there's no such limit. You can apply to any company. But whatever they pay the dividend or not, right? They pay the content distant, right? Dividend or they pay the you know decreasing dividend, right? It's not relevant, right? If they can solve the beta, you can always solve its value, uh, course of the equity, right? So this method is, is the widely applicable, right, to most companies, right? But what's the dis disadvantage for this method? It's also very obvious, right? First, to apply this equations right to apply the CPM models equations you must to estimate what market risk premium right but you know the market return is different with it over time right it will be you know very different over time right for example during the financial crisis or you know in the nowadays right in our pandemic of the corona virus right our market tumbled right and the uh, whole market return is very low, right? So compared with last year. So this is not robust, right? Can be worried right, over time. Also, it's not easy to estimate the beta sometimes, right? Because the beta is also, you know, change over time, right? Some year, right, you are very sensitive to the change of the stock market, but some year maybe not, right? So this one is also not a robust measure, will be worried of time, right? And also, when we do the CPM models, right, we use our past information, past data, right, to predict something, right, it's by return, right, something in the future, which is not always what reliable, right. The past is not always what can be the consistent with what happened in the future, right. So we can now use the historical data right, to make a product. Um, predictions sometimes, right? It's not very robust, right? So you can say our security market line method, it is very popular, right? But sometimes it's also not very robust, right? Can vary over time, right? For the cost of equities. So let's do more one one more questions, right? To solve the cost of equity, apply the DGM model and the CPA model, right? So these questions, right? The company has a beta 1.5. Market risk premium is nine percent. The current risk free rate is six percent. And so, from the first part of these questions, you can actually solve what cost of equity, right? Use the security market line method or use the CAPM model. You can call it, right? For the CPM model, capital asset price model, we have the risk free rate plus the beta times the market risk. Premium, right? Our risk free rate, right, six percent. Right, and beta is what? Beta is the one point what? Five, right? And also the questions, right, give the market risk premium directly, and right? so you have this one directly, right? You don't need to plug the number for risk free rate in the in the bracket, right? You call this premium directly. That's the nine percent, right? So six percent plus the one point five times nine percent, right? Equal to a six percent plus one point five times nine. Five times nine is forty five. So four plus nine will be thirteen. Thirteen point five percent, right? So six plus thirteen point five percent equal to a nineteen point what five percent, right? You can see the numbers, but right? it's 19.5%. Right? Use the CAPM model. Right? Next, we will what? We will use the dividend growth model. Right? If we know these companies pay the dividend and the dividends are growing with the constant rate, we can also apply what? DGM model right? to solve the cost of equities. Right? R is equal to the, you know, is what you know the P0 equal to the D1 over R minus G, right? So R equal to D1 over P0, right? Plus G, plus the growth rate, right? And uh, you know the dividend just paid our last time is what two dollars per share, right? So D1 equal to the D0 times one plus G, right? D0 equal to what? Two dollars, right? Growth rate is what six percent. So two times what one plus six percent, right? P 
P0, right? P0 is the price of the stock, right? The price of stock now is selling forward 15.65%. So that's the price here. Our growth rate is right, 6%. Right? So you plug all these numbers right, into the formula. Right? You can solve the what? You can solve the cost of equity by right? use the dividend growth model. Right? That's equal to 19.55%. And you can see the two measures are very close but not exactly the same. Right? So for more you know, consistent right, estimate of this cost of equity, you can take a average of these two numbers right, to be used as a cost of equity for this company. Right? So you can take an average of these two numbers, use the CPM models and use the DGM models. Right? The average will be a better measures right, for the cost of equities right, for these questions. And also for these lectures, right, we study the CAPM models, right? we study the security market line, and we also study you know, how to apply the beta right, to solve the cost of equities. Right? So when you study these lectures, please take um, you know, notes and also keep in mind, right? you should pay attention to the manner detail right, of the word. Of the questions, right? In the questions, you are given market risk premium, right? All the market risk return, right? These two are totally what are totally different, right? The market risk premium is the RM minus RF, right? Market risk return is RM to sell. Right, so you should pay attention to the word right, in the questions, right? And also, right, same thing right, like our dividend growth model, right? Dividend is just paid or will, will be paid in the next year, right? So one is the diesel, if you, you saw dividend just paid or last paid, right? If you say dividend will be paid, will be D1, right? So it will be also different in the calculations, right? So please pay attention right, to these, you know, manual details, right? For, in the questions, this will cause the calculation right, mistake right, when you solve these problems. Right, so that's for this lecture for CAPM models.